fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. I was sitting with a mom the other day, and she was processing a lot of worry. She admitted to me that she spends most of her time crying, that she'd been in therapy, and she was taking medication, which was helping with the crying, and she was trying to hold it together. But she had a lot of worries, worries for herself, worries for her husband, but mostly worries for her adult daughter, who seemed like she was in a bad situation where she couldn't get influence to help, and she felt hopeless. She just confessed this hopelessness in our time together, and, and I don't think she was asking for help. She was just kind of verbally processing and admitting what was essentially suffering. Suffering. A pain so deep that you're overwhelmed and you don't know how, how to make it go away. Stop. I have dealt with a lot of suffering in my life. It comes and goes in waves, and I try to process that trauma. I first went through many steps of trying to solve it with a lot of therapeutic practices. I was aware, I'm aware of my, what we call maladaptive tendencies, my, my coping mechanisms that are not healthy, whether it be junk food or binge watching Netflix or something like that. Being aware of these and knowing that they don't help, I try to turn to helpful coping mechanisms. exercise, diet, rest, uh, mindfulness, meditation, uh, taking a walk, and these weren't working. My, my, my current state of suffering that I was in processing this traumatic moment would not go away. And so I had to move on and try other things. And so I started going through some therapeutic practices. I tried using grounding techniques to help me just calm down in the moment from some of the suffering I was feeling. Yeah, Can you weird. stop? Can I just catch my breath for a second? How can I say to stop doing that? I'm sort of, you're gonna freak me out. My grounding techniques helped me kind of calm down, but I still was dealing with the suffering. I was dealing with it in my body. Uh, as I was feeling symptoms of adrenaline rush and just, just just heavy despair and depression in my body. And I was dealing with it cognitively. Uh, I was dealing with existential thoughts of dread and, and guilt and worry. And I just didn't know it was too much. And sometimes I'll have episodes where it's trauma from one source or one moment or one thing and I can process that but other times I feel attacked on all sides I feel like there is uh, I, like I am surrounded by everything and anytime I try to focus on one problem all the other problems stab me in the back so then I turn to those problems and I get stabbed from the other side and as I try to focus on any specific one or try to focus on my somatic experiencing which is uh, what I'm feeling in the body uh, my brain attacks me and so it's this horrible, horrible cycle. So my grounding techniques could only get me so far. <clears throat> and I began to then try to part and parcel it out with internal family systems and a book that we just talked about recently. And I tried to uh, ask myself what part of me are, are feeling upset or worried. And there were just too many to focus on. I tried using my emotions wheel uh, to pull up a, a wheel of emotions and target the emotions I felt. And I was feeling about half of the entire wheel, about one third of the entire wheel between just feeling bad, sad, depressed, anguish, overwhelmed. I tried using cognitive behavioral therapy. I tried talking through my, my 
my worries using the Socratic method and challenging and reframing some of these beliefs. You are familiar with the thought experiment, the ship of Theseus in the field of identity metaphysics. When no original plank remains, is it still the ship of Theseus? Free of the rot, is that the ship of Theseus? Neither is the true ship. Both are the true ship. Well, then we are agreed. Uh, I went to Peter Levine, who is a man, a doctor who specializes in somatic experiencing to help me with my body. Cognitively, it wasn't working, I was striking out. So I went to a YouTube video of Peter Levine walking someone through it. He said, picture a moment where you feel good. And this is called pendulum, um, where, where you, you can picture that moment and go to your bad feeling, go to your good feeling. And, but it starts with, find that good moment, a time where you felt good. And it dawned on me like, like Peter Panning and Hook. I have no happy thoughts. In this moment, I, I didn't have any happy thoughts. Gotcha. Oh. Just think happy thoughts. I haven't got any. I didn't have any happy thoughts. I could not think. Every time I tried to look back and dig deep into memories, they were tainted by a level of grief or regret or trauma. And I couldn't find a moment that was free of pain. And so I tried to exercise gratitude. I tried to write out a list of just things that, you know, to God that I was thankful for. And it wasn't, it wasn't worth I remembered the advice that I gave this mother. We contemplated Jesus on the boat in the storm where he's asleep in the bow and the disciples come running up to Jesus, shaking him, waking him up. And, you know, Jesus, don't you care that we're dying? Don't you care? And, you know, when Jesus calms the storm, he gets up, he says, peace be still and the, cor and, and the storm calms down. But Jesus doesn't turn to them and say, congratulations, you passed the test. You had a storm, you had a difficult situation, you, come, you came running to me. You laid your problem at my feet. You trusted in me to calm the storm. That's not what Jesus said. And me and this mother, we sat in that moment, we sat in that realization, and then we contemplated, you know, when Peter walked on water, Jesus didn't calm the water until Peter was back in the boat. It's not until we got to Paul on Malta, where Paul had a faith that could be shipwrecked. Paul had a faith that could wander adrift at sea. Paul had a faith that could be washed up to shore. Paul had a faith that could be bitten by a snake. And all through it, Paul just trusted in Jesus. And I said, I think that's the last level of Christianity that God has for us. One that we will work our entire lives to attain. I think we dip our toes there, we arrive there from time to time, and then we drift back away we, from that realization which is surrender, just trust Jesus. So in my moment of suffering, I put on uh, Church Homes a guided meditation and I didn't know what to do. I just thought, let me try and meditate. Let me turn to Jesus. I realized I was relying too much on my, acad on my like, academic uh, studies of the body and therapy, and which I think are, are absolutely tools in the tool belt. But what I learned in this moment is that while those are useful tools in the tool belt, they're no substitute for God. So I turned on the meditation app and it said, we're gonna take communion. We're gonna take communion. I was like, oh, okay. So I grabbed some red wine. I grabbed uh, a, a saltine cracker and the guided meditation just said, go to the cross, give your worries to Jesus. Thank him for healing. I gave my suffering to Jesus. I, I, I've acknowledged my healing could only be found in him, that he would be the source of all of my healing. All healing is divine. All health, whether it comes from medicine or miracles, comes from God. God is health. He designed health. He's the source of all health. And so whether it's from therapeutic practices or medicine that you're taking or doctors that you see or Jesus himself visiting you in a dream, uh, it it all comes from God. It all comes from God. By his stripes, we are healed, right? So he took the bread, took the wine. Uh, as I 
As I finished that, I was going to be done, but it automatically started the next meditation. It brought up joy. And it said, we're going to focus on joy. And I thought, well, I could use some joy. And it said, take a moment just to smile. Just to smile. And I'll be honest, I couldn't find my smile in that moment. I wasn't there yet. But it said, think of the future you want. Think of what you're praying for, what you're hoping for. And just give a moment to rejoice with that in God. Whether that's the salvation of a loved one or a better future and better living situation for your family, for yourself, and a better health situation. It just said, take a moment to envision that and and rejoice with God for it. Uh, Receive that blessing from God. uh, And also trust him for something even greater than you can imagine. So I took that moment to to sit in joy and picture a, a better future, a better hope. And again, I finished that guided meditation. And before I could turn it off, the next one came on and it was on peace. And I thought I could really use some peace. Shalom. All is right between me and God. All is right between me and the world, me and my enemies, me and my loved ones. And going through these three guided meditations on the Church Home app by Judah Smith, it brought me through the final surrender, which was this. You can't survive any storm without Jesus. You can't make any money or have any provision without God. You will not find any hope, health, or security without Jesus. It all comes from him. And so if you're facing job loss or relationship loss or uh, your children or siblings or family members in a bad situation and you're just in a situation where you cannot help, you don't have the resources to contribute or they won't listen to advice or you don't even have the advice to give, surrender them to Jesus. Turn your finances over to Jesus. Turn your health over to Jesus and you'll find peace in him. And so the final stage for processing suffering surrender. Look at me. We're going to be okay. You can rest now. Let's go home. Let's go home. Maybe I'll try some of that life, Tony. I find that when we're suffering and we surrender, it doesn't make all the bad things go away. Uh, Your problems aren't solved magically at the snap of a finger. Jesus doesn't part the clouds and arrive on his white horse immediately. Some people could, could carry their situation of suffering for the rest of their lives, but they don't have to suffer. They can give the suffering to Jesus while the situation may remain the same. We can find our peace, we can find our hope, we can find our security in Jesus. And that's what I'd like to encourage you guys in today. Uh, If you need hope, if you are suffering, if you are looking for Jesus, uh, then find him in this moment. Pause, take a moment. He's he's there with you. He's physically there with you. Uh, Jesus never leaves you, never forsakes you. He's the friend who sticks closer than a brother. So just take a moment. Think about things in your life that you have a firm grip on the steering wheel or you're, you're white knuckling the control and realize that you don't have control. All control comes from God. All control belongs to Jesus. And surrender. Hand it over to him. Hand your situation to him. This is not an encouragement to be lazy. This is not an encouragement to uh, give into those unhealthy coping mechanisms. This is not an encouragement to uh, give up on your health journey. This is an encouragement to invite God into it and to realize that he's the one who's going to pilot it and you're going to be an active participant in his health and wellness and prosperity. And so if you need health, wellness, prosperity, peace of mind, you need ease from suffering, Breathe, 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 breathe. The answer is Jesus. The solution is him. Take a moment, rest in his presence, and give him 
all of your concerns, all of your worries. Trust in him and he'll save you. Just breathe. You don't have to solve the problem. He will. You don't have to come up with the money. He will. You don't have to find the job. He'll provide. Again, fill out the resumes. Again, go to work if you have a job. Again, go to your doctor. Show up for your appointments. Do all of that. But turn it over to Jesus. Keep in mind that he is the one piloting. He's in control. I hope this has been helpful, and I hope you guys can take a moment to breathe, 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 breathe. Everything is okay. He has everything. And so if you find yourself in that storm, then yes, go to Jesus in the battle, but don't wake him up. He's aware. He knows of the storm. Lay on the pillow with him and say, we're going to survive. I trust in him. My oil has never run out. I have never been forsaken. Well, I've never been shipwrecked without hope that through the shipwrecks, through the storm, through the fire, no matter what comes, Jesus has you and will be with you. So take your hands off the steering wheel. Give it to Jesus. I hope you can find the encouragement to do that. There's a story in the Bible where someone, Jesus says, uh, a, man, a man comes to Jesus praying over his son who he believes is demon-possessed. And Jesus says, well, if you believe, then I can heal him. And the man says, I believe, I believe, help me, help me in my unbelief. And so if you're not there, you don't have that trust, then just make your prayer, Jesus, help me in my unbelief. Instill in me your spirit and the courage to let go and trust you. I hope this has been encouraging. I'll see you guys later. Hey. If this has been helpful for you and you would like some one-on-one -on -one time to work through some of this stuff with me personally, you can head on over to Side by Side Counseling. Their website is sidebysideaz.com. I work with them as a pastoral mentor and coach, and we can do a free 15-minute consultation and see if we're a good fit. If not, no harm, no foul. Maybe I can refer you on to someone else. Bye.